Hello and welcome back to another video. My name is Mike Davies and today I'll be showing you how to create the Drost effect using GIMP. This is basically the effect where it looks like you have two mirrors facing each other and so it just looks like an infinite image. I'll be using GIMP version 2.10.24 which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this tutorial. Before I get into that, don't forget to check out my website where I have tons of free software tutorials and help articles at daviesmediadesign.com. You can get more by becoming a DMD Premium member, and you can check out my GIMP 2.10 Masterclass from Beginner to Pro Photo Editing on Udemy, and I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. Here is the final composition we'll be creating for today's tutorial. So as you can see, what we're doing is we're taking the image and we're placing it inside of this picture frame, and we're just doing that infinitely so that it appears that this infinitely fades. As I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, this is called the Drost effect or the Drost effect. If you're going to say it in D Dutch, that was very horrible. But horrible pronunciation aside, let's dive into this tutorial. Real quick, I am using a free photo from Pexels for this tutorial. Just use the little drop down arrow. I went with the large size here. Once you've downloaded the photo, go to File Open or I'll just go to File Open Recent since I opened this up recently and just click to open up your photo. You can either convert this to GIMP's native sRGB color space or keep it at the color space that it originally comes with. I'll just go with convert. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this area here inside of our picture frame. So all I'll do for this, since it's already a rectangle shape, is come over here and grab my rectangle select tool. Of course, if you're using a circular frame, you can just go with the ellipse select tool. But then I'm just going to come over here and I'm just going to click and drag my mouse. And that's going to just select the inside of this frame here. And hold control, zoom in, and just use the little handles here to adjust this so that it fits nice and snugly. Like that. So once we've done that, we can come down here to our tool options and you'll see an area called size. So this is telling us the current size of the rectangle we just drew. So it's 713 by 898. Once you have that measurement, you're gonna come up here to where it says fixed aspect ratio, and we're gonna change this to these values here. So 713 colon 898. And now what I'll do is I'm gonna click and drag the corner handle here. It doesn't really matter which corner handle. So I'll click and drag, and as I'm clicking and holding, I'm gonna hold the control key to expand from center and hold the shift key to enable that fixed aspects ratio option. You can see that happening over in the tool options. And then I'm just gonna drag this out. And basically we're just dragging it out until it's about to reach the edge of our photo. You can click inside the selection area and move this down a bit and then just scale it up basically as large as it'll go holding control and shift after I click. So right about there so that we're not getting any of the area outside. And of course you can center this up here. I'm just using the elbows as my reference. So this area is going to be the area that goes inside the frame. So because this is the same aspect ratio as the frame, it should tuck neatly in there. But then what I'll do is hit Control C or go to Edit, Copy. And then I'm gonna just go straight to Edit, Paste in Place or Control Alt V. And that's going to place this area inside our selection area to its own floating selection layer. So I'm just gonna click to add this to its own new layer. So there you can see we have our pasted layer. Now what I'll do is come over to my toolbox and I'm gonna grab the Unify Transform tool, which is gonna be Shift T on your keyboard. And I'll just click once on here. And now we have a variety of handles. So what I'll do is hover my mouse over the handle that's going to display the scale tool. Before I click on this, I'm gonna hold Control and Shift, and then I'm gonna click and drag this down until it's about the same size here and release. And now when I click in the middle portion of my image, that'll turn the Unified Transform tool to the Move tool. And then I'll hold Control, Zoom in. So we also have another handle in here for the Perspective tool. So I'm just gonna use that handle to get this nice and aligned to the corner of the frame. Hold Control, Zoom in with my mouse wheel. So again, we're gonna use that inside handle to get this nice and aligned here. Hold Control, Zoom out. Hold control, zoom in with the mouse wheel. 
So align that there. And we'll move over, hold control, zoom in, and get this nice and aligned to this corner. Keep in mind, you can also use tools like the rotate tool by hovering on the outside here if you need to rotate this. But once I'm ready, I'll come over here and click transform. And now we have the first instance of this image. Don't worry, we don't have to repeat this over and over again to get the drost effect. This is just step one. The reason we're doing this is for those cases whenever you have something obstructing the frame. So right now, this lady's hands are not obstructing the frame, which means we don't really have to do anything else to this. However, I just have another example set up here. So this is a very similar photo. If I hold control and zoom in, you'll see her finger kind of overlaps on here a little bit. And this is something that'll be common as you do this more and more. So basically the reason I have this first layer we created here as we did over here on the original we're working on right now is that I can right click on here and go to add layer mask. And then with the layer mask set to white full opacity, I'll click add and I'll grab my paintbrush, switch my colors here to black and white. And I have my paintbrush set to a hardness of 100. So basically now we can mask out this area of the finger that's overlapping on here. And let me switch over to white as my foreground color by hitting the X key. And we can just paint any part of the finger back in or switch back to black. But there you can see that just helps this have a more realistic effect there. And once we've added our layer mask, I can come over here, right click, and go to apply layer mask. And now all of the instances of this inside layer here that's inside the frame will now have that little area masked out. That's just an extra step to help this look more realistic. Let's come back over to the original image we're working on. So I don't need to create a layer mask for this, but if I did, I would have it applied by now. So the next step, regardless of whether or not you did that last step, is to come over here and go to filters, map, Recursive Transform. I do have an entire tutorial dedicated to the Recursive Transform tool, so definitely check that out if you want more information on this tool. And right now I have my canvas controls turned off, so I'll come over here and make sure on canvas controls are turned on. So as you'll see here, the controls are the exact same as for the Unified Transform tool. So I'll hold Control and Shift, and just like we did with the Unified Transform tool, I'll hover over the Scale tool handle and click and drag this in. And you'll see that as I do that, it's gonna create all of these other instances known as iterations of this. And this is how we're going to easily create the Drost effect. And I'll release my mouse, hold control, zoom in. So now I can use the perspective handle here to get this aligned better to the corners. So we're clicking the inside handle and just dragging the corner until it matches there. Hold control, zoom in with the mouse wheel and we'll get this matched up and hold control zoom in we'll do this last corner here so right there looks pretty good so this doesn't quite look infinite because we only have three iterations going on right here so what I'll do is just crank up the iterations so I just like to do this manually using the up arrow here so just crank it up one at a time. And as I do that, you'll see it starts to get more and more infinite and it's just fading there. And in this case, it looks like around 14 or 15 is going to be the magic number. So now I'll come over here and click OK. And there you'll see we have our Drost effect, which I've pronounced like seven different ways in this video. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.